You know, one of the things that often happens, certainly happens to me, is uh, the whole matter of eye drops. Um, there's always sometimes an assumption that you know how to use them properly. Well, not always. And Dr. Michael Koval will come up and tell us a little about how best to use the eye drops, and maybe even tell us a little about different kinds of eye drops. So, welcome. Thank you. My name is Michael Koval. I'm one of the clinical glaucoma fellows here at Wills. And so, um, as you said, I'm going to talk to you all a little bit about how the drops work that we use in glaucoma and what are the best ways for you guys to use them to get the most out of your drops. So how do, how do drops work? And I'm sure by this point in the talks that you've heard so far today, you know that one of the biggest things that we can do in patients with glaucoma to help control uh, the disease is to lower the pressure inside of the eye. So the goal of glaucoma drops in general is to lower the pressure inside of your eye. The pressure is lowered in one of two different ways in most cases, and those ways are to either decrease the production of fluid inside of the eye or to increase the outflow of the fluid from your eye via the natural drain inside of your eye. And we use about four different types of medications that <clears throat> all lower the pressure inside of your eye in different ways. And so I'm just going to briefly go through the most common drops that we use in glaucoma, tell you how they work, and just some tips about the drops. Um, one class of medications, they're, they're prostaglandin analogs. And the, the drops work to increase the outflow of fluid from your eye. Um, all of these drops, as you can see on this slide, <clears throat> have a common name or a common um, few letters in the name. And that's one way to identify what type of, type of drop you're using. For instance, the prostaglandins all have um, P-R-O-S-T or prost in the actual name. And when I'm talking about the name of the drop, I'm talking more about the generic name. Um, as you'll see on the slide, uh, many of the drops will have a um, trade name, for instance, Lumigan or Travitan Z. But in parentheses, underneath the trade name, you'll see the generic name of the drug. <clears throat> and in the prostaglandins, they all have prost, like latanoprost, travaprost, bimatoprost, and tafloprost. All of these drugs are in the same class, and so they work the same way on your eye. But that doesn't mean necessarily that your eye will respond the same way to each drop. Even though they're the same class, they're, they're slightly different. So it may be common for your doctor, if one of these medications isn't working for you, to try a different brand or a different, a different type of the same class of medication. And one common thing you'll see about these drops is that they all have an aqua or a greenish colored cap. Now that's a very good way for you to memorize or try to remember what type of medicine you're using. Because it does help your doctor sometimes, if you can't remember the exact name of the drop that you're using, to say, well, I know that it had an aqua-colored cap. Because then we can at least narrow it down in our mind as to what drop you're, you may have come in on from a different eye doctor if you're referred to see us for a glaucoma treatment. Um, but one thing to be aware of is that this rule does not always apply. The drops don't always have the same color cap just because they're the same type of drop. But it can help. Another type of glaucoma drop we use are the beta blockers, and these ones also decrease the production of fluid inside of the eye. Uh, these all have the OLOL at the end of the name, such as timolol, betaxolol, levobunolol, or cardiolol. And <clears throat> they're all beta blockers. Some of them work in different ways in the way they affect the receptors inside your body that, that cause the decrease of production of fluid. But these drops tend to have yellow-colored caps. Um, but as you see from this slide here, there are a couple outliers, such as the green cap and the blue cap, so it's not always um, a surefire way to say that it was a beta blocker that you were using based on the color of the cap. But most of the commonly used ones will have yellow. The adrenergic agonists, they increase the outflow of the fluid from your eye. And these names all have onidine at the end of them, such as bromonidine, which is the most commonly used one, which is also referred to as alphagan, or apraclonidine, which is less commonly used. Um, it, it was more commonly used in the past. We still use it for some diagnostic testing. But um, this drop, uh, the bromonidine, tends to have a purple-colored cap. Uh, the trade version will have a green bottle at times, but usually you can tell your doctor I was on the drop with a purple cap, and it gives us a good idea that you were using bromonidine. 
Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors also de decrease the production of the fluid inside of your eye. And these ones all end with the amide at the end of the name, uh, such as brinzolamide and dorzolamide. And um, these drops tend to have an orange coloring to the bottle or, or an orange cap on them as well. There are other types. Um, there are some drops that actually combine more than one medication into one bottle, which can actually be pretty convenient for you if you are using Timolol already and your doctor decides that he wants you to try Alphagan as well, he can actually give you a drop that combines those two medications so you don't have to put one drop in after the other. And it can simplify things for you. Um, these drops can have a variety of colors to them. They usually have a blue colored cap, but um, not always. And then there are other drops that your uh, glaucoma specialist may choose to use, such as pilocarpine, which is a drop that makes your pupil smaller, but also increases the outflow of fluid from your eye. There are others that your doctor may use for other reasons. For instance, if you've had surgery, there may be a steroid drop that tends to have a pink colored cap, or there may be a dilating drop that you use that has a red colored cap. But in general, it's, it's, a, it's good for you to know about the drops that you're using and what color caps they, they are because, for one, it can help you remember which drops you have taken. It can help you tell your doctor about what drops you're taking. And it, it's, it's a good way to get into a system to help you remember how you use your drops and become more regular about using them. <clears throat> so a common question that we often get is, how much of my drops should I use? Now, eye drops are unique in the sense that with other medications you take for other problems, such as high blood pressure, for instance, you'll be taking a tablet or a pill. And sometimes your doctor will prescribe a medicine to you and tell you, take half of a pill. And if it's not working for you, he may increase you to using the whole pill later on. So in that sense, using more of the medication does benefit you and it, and it does change the way it affects your body. But it's not, it doesn't work exactly the same with glaucoma eye drops. Um, I'll, I'll talk to you about why. And, one thing that you should know is that your eye, when you put a drop in, can only hold a certain volume of fluid. Your eye holds about 30 microliters of fluid in the area that you actually put the drop in. And I'm talking about the area between your lower eyelid and your, the eye itself. The average drop of medicine from a dropper, and I'm just talking about one little drop when you squeeze your bottle and it comes out into your eye, actually hold, holds about 39 microliters on average. And some of the drops will actually have more than that, some will have less, but there are certain droppers that uh, studies have shown there will be up to 50 or more microliters per drop. And so what does this mean? Well, it means that more than one drop doesn't necessarily make the drop work better in your eye. You only need one drop of medication because it makes sense your eye can only hold less than one full drop. So if you put more than one drop in your eye, all you're really doing is making yourself pay more for your medicine because you're going to run out sooner. And um, so in order to keep the drop longer and not have to call in for refill sooner and spend less money, it makes most sense just to put one drop in the eye. <clears throat> Another common question is, well, if I use this drop more frequently, is it going to work better? So for instance, your doctor prescribes you a medicine such as Timolol. Timolol can be taken once a day or it can be taken twice a day. But some people think, well, if my pressure's high, why don't I just start putting it in my eye every few hours or more frequently? Maybe it'll help my pressure get under better control. But the medicines are actually formulated to be at their maximal effective concentration, given the way that the doctor prescribes it to you. So if your doctor tells you to use a drop twice a day, putting it in your eye more than that doesn't really make it work any better for you. Um, what it will do, just as I said in the last slide, though, is make you run out more quickly and again, have to pay more and buy more medications. And going back to that last slide, one thing that people may think, well, what about the eye drops I buy from the store? I mean, you tell me, for instance, to use dry eye medicines like artificial tears if my eyes are dry. And if some people need to use those a couple times a day and they feel fine, but if your eye feels really dry, you can use those drops more frequently to keep your eye more lubricated. And so I can understand why people might think that they can use these glaucoma drops more frequently as, the, as they do an artificial tear or something. But because these ones actually contain medicine, they're not there just to lubricate the eye, it doesn't work the same. Uh, another very good question that patients want to know is when they're taking more than one drop, which many people end up having to take, how long do you need to wait between your drops? I mean, <clears throat> if you were to hand me three, three different medicines and say, take these twice a day, I might think, 
Well, I'm going to put one in, grab the next bottle, put the, put the next one in, and then grab the next bottle and put it in. And I've gotten all three drops into my, they should be working, right? Well, this goes back to the slide that I had before about how much uh, fluid the eye can actually hold on the surface. Um, if you're putting one drop in the eye and then quickly putting another drop in on top of it, what you're really doing is diluting the two medications together. And the extra medication is just going to run over your eyelid and drip down your face as a tear, or it's going to be drained into your na nasal cavity through your tear ducts, and you're not going to get the full effect of that medication because it's diluted, it's running off of your eye, and you're losing it. So the best idea is to wait at least five minutes between each different drop. Um, some doctors may recommend five to ten minutes, but you need to have adequate time for each drop to actually work on the surface of your eye. <clears throat> and as I said, using them one after another, the effectiveness may actually be decreased. So if you're going back to your doctor wondering why your pressures aren't as controlled as he, he wants them to be, it may be because you haven't been using the drops properly and allowing them to have enough time to work. And is there anything that you can do to make the drop work better? Well, one thing that the doctor may ask you to do is called punctal occlusion. And this photo here at the bottom of this slide demonstrates what punctal occlusion is. Punctal occlu occlusion is basically occluding or closing off your punctum. The punctum is the hole in your lower eyelid, right <coughs> next to your nose, where tears drain into your um, tear duct system, and they drain from your eye down into your nose. That's why you may have noticed if you're crying or if you're tearing up a lot, you, s you may suddenly have a runny nose afterwards. That's because your tears are draining into your nasal cavity. So if you press down and occlude that little hole where your tears drain, it allows less of the fluid to be drained into your nasal cavity. It allows more of the medicine to stay on the surface of your eye. And um, that can actually make your medicines work a little bit more effectively. Another reason that your doctor may ask you to do punctal occlusion is to also avoid um, side effects from the medication. And I apologize, this photo, when I saw it last, didn't cover up the last line there. But what that last line says is it can reduce side effects of the medication. Some medications that we use in glaucoma are eye drop versions of medicines that have been used for other purposes throughout your body. Timolol, for instance, is a beta blocker. The beta blockers <clears throat> in pill form are often used to control blood pressure by your cardiologist or your general practitioner. And so even though you're getting that drop in a much, much smaller concentration than the pill that you're getting for your blood pressure control, it can affect your body if it's absorbed in a similar way, albeit at a much lower level. So if your doctor notices, for instance, that you have a slow pulse or <clears throat> breathing issues that the drop may affect negatively, he may ask you to do punctal occlusion to allow less of the drop to get into your nasal cavity and get absorbed systemically into the rest of your body. And so what is the best way to put the drops into your eye? Um, it may seem like a pretty um, silly question to ask because, well, it's a drop and you put it in your eye. It seems pretty self-explanatory, but you'd be surprised some people do have trouble getting the drop in their eye, and I completely understand why. I myself have been a contact lens wearer since I was young, and so I'm very used to touching my eye and getting a finger and other objects just very close to my eye, but for most people, you flinch. Anything comes near your eye, it's a natural reflex to close your eye to try and protect it. And so the idea of holding a dropper over your eye and letting a drop fall and hit your eye some people don't like that, and they close their eye, and it's very difficult for them to get the drops in there. And that can waste the drop, make you pay more, and, and have to go through um, your prescriptions more quickly if that happens. So a good method is to tilt your head back and pull down on your lower eyelid, and make sure that you're placing that eye drop between the eye and the lower eyelid. Um, some people prefer to lie back when they're doing that, and that's a perfectly acceptable way of doing it. Also, if you have somebody who can help you take your eye drop, that's great. That, that can make sure that they get it in your eye because your flinching isn't really going to affect that. But you can use your other hand as a guide. Um, so you would basically just pull your eyelid down with the hand that you're not holding the bottle with, and then you can use your finger at a right angle to your face and then rest the thumb of your finger that you're actually holding your eyedropper in on the finger that's at a right angle to your face and slide your finger down to the appropriate length so the bottle's sitting right over your eye. And that can, you can actually just remember where on your knuckle you have to rest your other thumb 
for using your eye drop, and it'll give you a good idea. So every time you're regularly, it'll just become a habit. You put your finger there, rest your other hand on your other finger, and put the drop in, and then there's less variation. You know you won't be wasting as many eye drops. Some other tips that um, can help you to make sure you get the drops in your eye are refrigerating your eye drops. If you refrigerate your drops, they're going to be cold, and it's a lot easier to feel something that's cold hitting your eye because sometimes if you've been using drops for a long period of time, your eye surface may be a little bit less sensitive to the drop actually hitting your eye. You may not know if it got in there. And so refrigerating the eye drops, you'll feel that cold sensation, and you'll know, okay, it's in my eye now. I don't have to put another drop in there. I know I didn't miss it. Um, another important thing, especially when you're using um, a drop for the first time, if you're not somebody who's been using drops for a long time, or if your doctor adds a new drop into your regimen, is to establish a system for putting the drops into your eye. It helps you remember which ones you've used and if you use your drop at the right time of day. Um, one example that a patient gave me that I thought was very good was um, putting the drops on a certain side of his nightstand. And so in the morning, it was on the right side. He'd put it in, and he'd move it to the left side. And so if he looked at his nightstand at any time during the day, he knew that, okay, I use my morning drop because it drops over on the left side of my nightstand. That means I need to use the nighttime dose now. Because it, it, you may think that, well, I mean, how could you not remember whether or not you use an eye drop? But when it becomes so routine, you may think, yeah, I put it in tonight, but wait a minute, did I? And it helps your doctor to know that you've been very regular about putting your drops in. Because if you show up for your appointment and you haven't been using your drops, and, um, but you did put it in, for instance, the night before you saw your doctor, your pressure may show up as being where your doctor wants it to be. But he may look inside your eye and say, well, things look like they're getting worse. Your nerve looks like there's a little more damage. Your visual field looks like it's got a little bit more loss in it. I don't understand. Maybe we need to add a new medicine. But the the real problem was that maybe you just were forgetting and weren't getting the drop in as frequently as you need to. And so that's why it's important to establish a system. One other thing that might help is the colors of the drops that we went through earlier can kind of help you establish like an order of how you like to use your drops. If you have Timolol has a yellow cap and Alphagan has a green cap, um, or sorry, a purple cap, and then you're taking another drop that has an orange cap, just do it in the order yellow, purple, green, or yellow, purple, orange, or however you're taking it, because that way you, when you have this collection of drops sitting on the table in front of you, you can say, well, I know that I'm on yellow right now. That means I've got to do purple next. Or I'm on green. That means I've already done uh, purple and yellow already. And that'll help you make sure you get into a routine and you get every drop in every single time. And then one other thing that could help is add your drops into your the daily activities that you're already used to, things you're already in a routine of doing. For instance, I brush my teeth when I wake up, and I brush my teeth in the evening before I go to bed. So if I were to take a drop that the doctor wanted me to use twice a day, put the drop right there in your cabinet, your medicine cabinet, right next to your toothbrush. So every time you grab that toothbrush, it's a reminder that I should grab my eye drop as well and put that in at this time of day. And that can kind of help you establish that routine to make sure that you're getting your drops in the way your doctor wants you to. So in conclusion, I hope this talk just kind of educated you a little bit about how the drops work and how to put them in your eye and, and why it's so important for us to know what drops we're taking and know that we're using them appropriately because not only does it help you save money and help you um, reduce your visits to the pharmacy to refill your eye drops, but more importantly, it helps us make sure you're really controlling the pressure in your eye the way that we want you to, that's best for your eye to preserve your vision, and it helps your doctor in treating you and knowing what's the next step. You know, is this drop working right, or do I need to go to something else? Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Go ahead. You miss something by hypertension when you take the baseline and control your hypertension. Any of those... Currently taking a medication for hypertension, would, would, any of the, would any of those drops interact uh, with your blood pressure medicine? The drops shouldn't interact with your blood pressure medication. As I said, you can get a little bit of a systemic effect sometimes from the drop. I mean, it's a very small amount that we're putting on the eye surface to control your eye pressure. 
Um, but some people do have reactions, and so that's something to discuss with your doctor. For instance, if you have breathing trouble, or if you have a slow heart rate, or you're already on a lot of blood pressure medications, sometimes these medications can affect you. And that doesn't mean they will, but it's definitely something to bring up with your doctor before they start you on a medicine. Or if you've been started on one, just to ask them about it and say, is there anything I should watch out for? Because I already take this type of medication. Could it make my pulse slower? Could it make me feel a little bit lightheaded, something like that. So that's a good question to ask your doctor. Can I do one more question? Is there any other questions? How does that happen to deal with glaucoma, but ointment? Can you demonstrate exactly how you can put that in your eye? Sure. Sure. Yeah. O that, her question was... Um, Ointments, which we do often prescribe, uh, there are actually ointments that have medications in them that we use in, in um, treating patients after glaucoma surgery or for various other reasons on the eye. Um, what's the proper way to put the ointment into your eye, or the best way to put it in? And what I usually tell patients to do is it's similar to the eye drop technique. Lower your lower eyelid and then squeeze out a, just a small strip. You don't need that much because when you blink, you're going to spread that ointment over the surface of your eye. So a small strip, and you can do this in the mirror, if you can see in the mirror, um, look closely and just put a small strip on the inside of your lower eyelid and then close your eye and blink that over the surface of your eye. Some people put it on the surface of a Q-tip and then rub that on the undersurface of their lower eyelid. That's acceptable as well, but with the ointments and the drops as well, what you want to be careful f uh, about is not touching your cornea, the surface of your eye, because that can actually scratch your eye and irritate you. So just be really careful when you're putting those in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.